Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Legends Only. My name is T. Kyle. And I'm Bradley. And this is your weekly pop culture podcast where we talk about Legends Only. And oh, the legends we will be discussing this week. That's right. A thousand JLo's, one Janet. A thousand JLo. Uh, 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 <laughs> that's right we're here in your cozy apartment a little later than usual but yeah uh, you know. shout out to everyone on the east coast <laughs> hope you made it shout out to everyone with social anxiety in a blizzard <laughs> yeah i kind of feel sorry for you <laughs> yeah you know we were a bit de- and uh miss uh demita joe delayed us a little bit mm-hmm. a little icy a little... <laughs> oh yeah like well the janet one too the doc yeah what were but you also- thinking about the blizzard oh yeah <laughs> like literally could not get here yes uh winter storm what is it called winter storm calvin no I what's no her name idea. oh she's got a name winter storm oh keenan oh, oh keenan <laughs> <laughs> yeah she actually didn't flop on the charts she sort of no she, she actually slayed hit. yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah we uh definitely as i Said on the uh, Rue cap, some of us definitely got some inches over the weekend. But then again, based on the Discord, plenty of you get inches every night. So, oh <laughs> wow. Well, um, <laughs> yeah, we got some inches. Well, speaking of your Rue cap, oh yeah, good segue. We've got some uh, recaps on the Patreon. Shout we out do. to our Patreon Legends Only, only fans. fans. Although. I would like to give one special shout out to an icon. Deserved. Minos, one of our Patreon Legends only fans, an icon. Minos Tina Aguilera. (laughs) Another Legends only animation. It is on our Instagram at Legends only underscore pod. Can we also just stress this is not something we commission? No. Or expect? Nope. We just turn around and there's an animated cartoon based on our voices. Yep. (laughs) <laughs> and it is so fucking funny. The first one is fucking funny. Oh, my God. This one is even better. She outdid herself. She really did. Yes. And if you listen to the episode before this, we discussed the changes to cartoon characters, including we we predicted that Mickey... Oh, we Ma- did. We literally did that. We are very nostradamus sometimes. And we jokingly suggested that Minnie Mouse might get a makeover. Yeah, and then three days later, they're like, oh, she's in a pantsuit now. Yep. Honestly, kind of a serve. A pantsuit serve. Yeah. Yeah, everyone's mad. High fashion editorial. I wouldn't go that far. It was cute. Yeah, but is she couture? (laughs) (laughs) It's temporary though, right? Well, it better be. Yeah. (laughs) It's just a collab. I think it's a collab. Stella McCartney, right? Work. Yeah. Sure. Mm -hmm. Well, anyway. I thought that was a singer. (laughs) <laughs> it's the daughter of one. Oh. <laughs> he used to be in a band. It's fine. Yeah. Um. But yeah, so we got the Joanne Rat edit. Mm-hmm. Go check it out. Yes. Go time. to our Instagram. <laughs> I can't explain it other than it is so fucking funny. Yeah. But yes. Thank you, Minos, for yet another work an- of art. Another one. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But yes, if you are subscribed to our Patreon in the Legend Tier Hire Brad is recapping Drag Race. I am recapping Housewives of Salt Lake City. Two shows about drag queens. (laughs) Literally. (laughs) And this week on Drag Race, we got the Night of a Thousand J-Lo's. Now, I did not listen to your recap. Sorry. So I don't know what you think. Well, um, it's on the bubbling under charts. It's fine. Um, What did we think? Did you watch, though? Yes. Okay. Night of a Thousand Melissa Gorgas. Yes. (laughs) Night of a Thousand Christina Millions. Literally. So I I have a theory, and I said this on the recap. Orange theory? I have an orange theory <laughs> fitness membership. <laughs> not sponsored. Not sponsored. not going not to sponsored. a sponsorship. Not sponsored. I don't work out. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. I think they were told that they can't do movie or music video references, because are you going to tell me that they're really going to do the 2013 HRC dinner gala look? Oh, it was so bad. I... There's something, you know, with licensing, and I don't know the the nitty gritty details, but like, you cannot tell me that nobody's going to do a waiting for tonight or uh, 
any of the movies, The Cell. Well, Maddie Morphosis posted a look the day later and said she was going to dress as The Cell. Oh. But they told her she couldn't. Like, she was going to do a sci-fi crazy look. Then why do it? I don't understand. Why would we do the challenge if... I, I, that's what I'm saying. I mean, no get right with the cane. Like, there are... I mean, let's just go back to the drawing board for a second. Okay. Who is thinking to do Who a is... J-Lo <laughs> runway? Who... Uh, the shit that I've seen, you don't have that many. I stand. Who is having that conversation? But, like... I just feel like, yes, I agree... But I just think there were looks from the On the Six era, that music videos. The Hustlers poofy jacket. It doesn't make sense to me. A little Made in Jenny Manhattan. Jenny from the Block. Gili. I don't know. Something fell off. Because I think if you're referencing a, a HRC gala, you were told, we can only use Getty subscription images for this. Literally. That's how I feel. Uh-huh. Like, I think it's a Getty images issue. <laughs> we're like, they're like, not, we're not paying for stills from Hustlers. But you can use this free Getty image picture. Like it's that's so weird. It's too weird for it not. And to that's be, probably like, not a J Lo thing. That's probably oh, no, no, no. a yeah. photographer or like bigger thing. Right? Yeah, it might even just be because it's such a big show now that they can't. What they got away with previously, they can't now. I don't know. I don't know. Because like, you know my, what they should have done? What? I would have done a green dress challenge. Mm. Given all the girls some boxes of shit. Yep. And they all have to make what their version. Of Ooh. their green dress, I love that. Would actually. have been so it doesn't have to be like the green dress because yeah. you know how I feel about an Instagram queen. Yeah, <laughs> but have them each make. You know what I'm saying? Like, I love. What that. would your version of the green dress be? Right, mine would just be a tank top. <gasps> a gr- Literally, a it would top. be a tank top, and it would expand, and it would be white and black down the sides. It would be fudgy the whale couture. <gasps> oh! Oh yeah! Oh yeah! What was your what a was mint be? fudgy the whale? Ooh yes! Look at that rich, like the eyeball that you had the guy draw on my whale. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, literally. <laughs> what about yours? Ooh, what would my green dress be? I mean, I do love an emerald, but I'm not oh. that classy. No, Dunkin' Donuts Christmas <laughs> red and green, or like lime spiked seltzer cans. Oh, that would be it. Yeah. Like a truly yeah. couture. <laughs> yeah. I don't know, though. You got some time before I'm season Irish, 15. I'm Irish, so I could do that. Oh, yeah. <gasps> Ooh, I would do Jessica Rabbit's dress, but green. It always comes back to Jessica Rabbit yeah, for you. Yeah, like emeralds, but yeah. fake emeralds. That's good. That would be chic, right? Yeah, really chic. Yeah, so it just left me kind of, my mind was boggled by it. Yeah, it was very bizarre. The choices were strange. And it also, it's like the Madonna runway. It was, they had the problem where everybody wore the kimono from a music video. So I don't understand. I don't get it. A little underwhelming if you ask me. Well, <gasps> some would argue fitting. <laughs> Sorry, I'm, jo- oh I'm joking. <laughs> oh, really? <sighs> that sucks. <laughs> the producers, when they couldn't get the rights to any of the music videos. No I'm kidding. <laughs> jail instantly jail. oh the rights to jenny from the block which is difficult to get not everybody has that <laughs> I'm, done. I'm done i swear i'm done i'm fucking joking by the way well i'm that just serious. glad that christina million got a check last night <laughs> <laughs> the inauguration look also sent me i as i also said at the root cap where were you on january 6th maddie morphosis <laughs> <laughs> Oh, what I'm gonna a have moment. to ask Lady Gaga. She's investigating. <laughs> She's investigating that outfit. Uh, speaking of investigating, oh, good pivot. One of the girls is now free. I think of potential Lawsuit? charges allegedly. Charges? Oh, yeah, Erica you're... Jane. Mm, Did pretty, you see the news? Pretty mess. I mm-hmm. I saw something. Her name was cleared. Yeah, she has been dismissed mm. from the fraud investigation wow so i think that means it's over so no more asking how much she knew and when she knew i think so interesting like i think it's done have you seen any reaction online i think a lot of people are shocked Mm. but i don't really know i'm less tapped into the the real housewives beat but i yeah i do remember seeing the headline at least 
Also, they're in the middle of filming right now. Oh. So we're going to see it play out. Of course. Also, Kathy Hilton <laughs> iconically went on Instagram Live the other night <laughs> in the middle of a cast taping some dinner. And they're all telling her to turn off the Instagram Live. They're like, Kathy, you're going to get in trouble. She's like, I know. I just want to say hi to everyone. She walks out of the venue while on Instagram Live and just starts talking to everyone on Instagram. She's incredible. Iconic. Yep. They're like, Kathy, you can't do that. I was like, stop, <laughs> Kathy. Like, you're going to get in trouble. She's like, I know. I just want to say hi to everyone. <laughs> Speaking of, I believe Paris and Love finally aired or just previewed or whatever her wedding. Yeah. Because I've been seeing a lot of content from it, especially Paula Abdul's Instagram story where she did a little slideshow with Kathy Hilton and an iconic shot with Demi Lovato and BB Rexa. And I've been hearing all the stories pouring out of the wedding. Kim Petras doing a slowed down Stars Are Blind. Wow. Um, she was doing the Sanasa with Nicole. The Sanasa with Nicole. What a sweet moment. It all comes full circle. Yeah. Not so simple life anymore. No. Yeah. So many legends. So many. Um, oh, there was another Housewives bid, actually. Yeah. The world is really just all connected these days. It sure is. So I'm recapping Salt Lake City mm -hmm. on Patreon, and I've been telling everyone it's iconic. And it's been on for four years or how long has this season been on? Been on? <sighs> this season's been on for like almost six months now. It's so many episodes. Three months a season. That's it. 12 episodes. Where are we at? I don't even. <sighs> it's like episode 23. Oh, oh, no. Which is fine. Honestly. But we could have drag... done without the first four episodes of the season. Drag us. We're on, we're on episode 104. Yes, season one, episode season 104. One. Yeah. <laughs> It's just because we don't want to change our logo or color of the logo. <laughs> we would have to do a new photo shoot. Oh, yeah. We do need to do a photo shoot. We do. I want to be heavily retouched. <laughs> it's going to be Mariah McDonald's promo photo. Yeah. <laughs> just you in front of Duncan. Like the Drag Race girls when they do their weekly photo series. I mean, yes. Mm -hmm. I want to be like that. The Look nothing like I did on the <laughs> runway. I want to do what Race Chaser does. They are, have you seen what they do with their covers? Mm -hmm. Brilliant! Just every season they have the they look at like one of the queens on the season. I love that. Yeah, we'll have to do that one day. But uh, anywho, so the daughter of a queen of pop, Lordez, mm. was watching Salt Lake City on a plane, which means it's potentially iconic. Madonna has walked in to see Salt Lake City. Yeah. <laughs> I have so many questions and thoughts about that. I wonder if she's ever seen it. She probably has. My Madonna's God. a Lisa Barlow stan. You think? Starting the rumor. <laughs> Who started the rumor that Madonna's a Lisa Barlow stan? <laughs> Me. <laughs> I could talk with Lourdes about this. You definitely could. I'm like, she's what do you around. She think hangs. about Jen Shah? We've seen her out and about in Lower East Side. <laughs> <laughs> Lourdes, what do you think about Jen Shah? Yeah. Yeah, and Jenny got fired this week. Drama. Oh, that's right. I did see that. Deserved, but like... Well, I saw oof. that it led to only more people being like, okay, well, what about these other flops? Literally. Yeah. Uh, well, now well, you've opened the floodgates. Yeah. <sighs> oh, well... Shut the fuck up about Mary! <laughs> you know, we did talk quite a bit about fashion on the runway. We did. Night of a Thousand High Fashions. Hit it. High fashion. Oh, so editorial. Guys, this is awesome. This is a billboard. This is super high fashion. Oh my God, that's so high fashion. So high fashion. Oh, well, we couldn't make it that far into this episode without mentioning her, especially not for high fashion. Miss Stephanie. My Stephanie Jaramato. Stephanie Joanne is here for Variety and Deadline. Oh, we didn't even talk about it. We revealed... The surprise guest was not herself in drag. Oh, yeah. Flop. It was just Jake Gyllenhaal. A man. A man who holds a scarf that has caused thousands of people to hate tweet him every day. The man from Taylor Swift's past. I saw a TikTok the other day that showed a movie he was in. Brokeback Mountain? No, not that one. I know that one. Okay. But... There was some movie, and he was wearing a red scarf in the movie from years before even meeting oh. Taylor. And they were like, oh, my God, is that the scarf? I was like, I don't know. Shut the fuck up about the <laughs> scarf. Yeah, literally. 
<laughs> I'm so tired. I of don't scarf. even know the story behind the scarf. I don't even care about the scarf. She left the, the scarf. He needs to she get back left the scarf. her scarf at his house. Yeah, and he wore it. I don't know if he. Wore and didn't it. Maggie steal it? Yeah, I think Maggie has it or something, or she knows where <laughs> kind it of is. Iconic. <laughs> <laughs> she walks around in it every day in front of a mirror. Has a man ever left any? Well, <laughs> where am I going with that? Uh, where are you? Uh, <laughs> First of all, a man has left a scarf in my place, actually. Really? Yeah. I returned it. Wow. I've had several items left. A ring. Actually, you would really like. Um, I got one of those. <laughs> <laughs> one of those um, like chunky gemstone oh. necklaces. Yeah, there have been articles. I'm trying to think. Has a man ever left anything here? It would require someone showing up. <laughs> um, no, I don't think so, actually. No one when they were running out? No. <laughs> Full speed. No. <laughs> That's not true. You know. No. Anyway, where uh, were we going well, with this? Um, oh. I, now I've just gone Lady down Gaga. a wormhole of thinking. Okay. Yep. Lady Gaga. High fashion photo shoot. And honestly... A very indulgent interview, but not as crazy as I was thinking it was going to get. Yeah. There were some moments they were sort of coddling each other, like calling each other mommy and daddy or something weird. And Oh, was like, that real? Yeah. Oh, I saw it on yeah. Twitter and I was like, oh, that can't be real. It's too embarrassing. If you think that, then it's true about oh. Lady Gaga's press tour for anything. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, there's no way she said that. I don't know what's real anymore on yeah. Twitter. So I always oh. assume now after being clocked last week or two weeks ago with fake tweets. Oh, the tweets. Kendall Jenner tweet. Yeah. Right. Now I just am like, nothing's real. Nothing's real. Nothing's fine. I'm torn. Well, in this case, everything Gaga says is real during her Oscars campaign. And we did get one incredible moment with Salma Hayek. Oh, I saw like, oh, your Instagram story. Oh my God. And the cinematography of the person who did the TikTok and zoomed in on Salma's face. <laughs> <laughs> We need to protest in front of Tish. We need to take revoke their license for education. It's gone too far. It's gone too far. <laughs> she was on one. That that interview was a lot. She was like, well, uh, you know, I've been trained in the classical tradition of such and such acting and in Salma's eyes. We need to set up like a like a we a GoFundMe to send Salma and anyone else involved in this press tour like a care package. <laughs> Like for enduring this, it's so hilarious. It's so entertaining. I'm obsessed with Oscars Gaga. She's really in her lane. Please give her the Oscar. Except she won't shut up. Once you know, it's gonna go way worse once she has one. Yeah. I think it's only gonna be way worse. And I'm obsessed with it. I want more. I love that. But yeah, she also did a photo shoot, and it was uh, high fashion. Mm-hmm. And speaking of somebody on the same level of Oscar worthy. Yeah. My pick for high fashion this week is Jaclyn Hill giving us her Pink Friday era. Now, did you see this promo? I, I'm i loading it up. <laughs> yes. It's literally Jaclyn Minaj. <laughs> I cannot. Literally Jaclyn Minaj. Her va va voom era. I... It's like literally Pink Friday, Starships. <laughs> Era. Starships are meant to have hair in yeah. their lipsticks. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit. Yeah, that mm-hmm. is next level. You can't keep a good girl down. No. It's literally just lipsticks. It is. Mm-hmm. And it's like, yes, slay, slay queen. queen. <laughs> oh my god. I'm obsessed with I don't know with why it. I find it so entertaining when Mua's release their <laughs> lip colors. I think it's because they treat it like it's a music video. Yeah. It's so funny. This is next level. We'll and have the way to... they name them, where they're like, this is Slay Queen. This is Slap My Ass. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Especially how she does. She named them something like really ridiculous. The whole collection? Yeah. Oh. I think the names are like in the promo. Oh, you're right. Oh my God. The kiss at the end is so X-Tina. She's literally X-Tina. This is extremely X-Tina. I think that's why I'm obsessed is yeah. because this she's is... literally... A bit accelerate. Jacqueline Extina Minaj. <laughs> now, I don't know if she put the names in here in this one, but... I think I saw like a reel or... I'm, I watch everything. Oh, you're right. There's a second reel. In control. I'm <laughs> in it. Easy peasy. Yes, bitch. <laughs> you guys. 
No They're rules. They're all slay though. Coming in hot. That's all of them. I think I'm so obsessed. It's because she is literally ex Tina. Yeah. And I'm just jealous. And you're a fighter. Yeah. You're you will fight. You will die on the Jaclyn Hill. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> this is not sponsored by Jaclyn Cosmetics. It's not. No. But I am as hairy as her lipsticks. <laughs> <laughs> oh my it's god it's so true though yeah. <laughs> do, there's your comparison video yeah. oh my god i cannot like it was just like no big deal <laughs> like sucking dick and cock like i'm just like oh my god me against the lipstick yeah <laughs> oh my god yeah we stand we have to we simply must but other than that, there's nothing that I was like. Yeah, no one else wore anything. Yeah. Yeah. That's fine. Speaking of pop stars, I think it's time we take a dive into our favorite app. Mm-hmm. Not seamless, but TikTok. Some TikTok talk. TikTok talk. One queen finally joined after however long TikTok's been around. Four years? Yeah. Yeah. Miss Mandy Moore took a walk to remember. And she did a little watch along, which was cute. She uh, she brought on the emotions. Mm-hmm. She revisited a classic. Bop. And she did the Celine Dion trend where everybody's been doing it. It's the new thing. I think it's already the old thing. All coming back to me now. Yeah, it's been around for a while. It's been around for a while where you have people help you out to do like a uh, impromptu glamazon pop star moment. I love the one of the girl that's in the subway. I'm going to send this to you because I low key, when we start going out again, <laughs> I want to do this. Because <laughs> the cinematography is. Oh, this is strong T Kyle vibes. Yeah. Yep, she's serving. That's six trulies <laughs> and a mission. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> T Kyle 2 15 a.m. vibes. Yep. Uh, but yeah, Mandy Moore's on it. She's, she's having a cute little time. We, we love to see it. And another pop star has arrived on the platform. Now, I don't know that we've even mentioned her, only in passing, but she's been a staple for years. We're talking, of course, about Angel Mommy. (laughs) She's an icon. (laughs) She's an icon. Angel Mommy and John Deese, um, the power couple of 2022, giving you a very Heidi and Spencer debut single. Yeah, it is something. It's something. It's called What You Know About Me. And uh, the artwork is fire. Yeah, this was something. I love all of the listen now on Spotify logos all over the cover art. <laughs> um, already am. It's, it's ahead of its time. Uh, it was actually the most giving me Brittany, Kevin, and they say, Bob, I'm crazy. It's actually giving me that kind I'm of vibe. I'm fine going on the record saying that's a bop. It is a bop. It was a different time. <laughs> yeah. It's a bop. But yeah, Angel Mommy, if you don't know, she does these sort of Lynchian, sub, subversive, David Lynch, uh, um, surrealist art um, performance style skits, sketches that are not human. Like they are uncanny, like sort of strange interactions with her kids and this man that just don't make any sense the way they interact with each other all is just like, like the song yes <laughs> she's a performance artist uh marina Ambramovic is shaking <laughs> that's about it love that uh well you know what else showed up on my release radar which made no sense oh on my radar oh on my radar that toxic pony mashup okay yes so this was a viral hit mm. on TikTok. Mm. Okay. okay. And now got an official release. Okay. Don't know if it's officially licensed. Endorsed. Right. Well, the thing is that things sneak on streaming all the time. Yeah. And just because you tag an artist's name doesn't mean they endorsed it. As far as we know, she has not acknowledged it. Yeah. So this is a mix of toxic, uh-huh. local fave. Yeah. Genuine pony, and then something else, right? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's there if you want to listen. 
I don't really think it's Britney endorsed. And I think you can get songs on the streaming platforms without necessarily getting the official approval. Like there are Cassie demos that still surface under Cassie's account that fans have just like uploaded over the years. Oh, there's like, yeah, it can happen, but maybe it's, maybe it's the same situation as Madonna's frozen remix. And it finally just, they were like, we might as well cash in these coins. Cause kind of smart. Yeah. So uh, if you want it, come yeah. get it, ride it. Toxic Pony. <laughs> it's kind of good mashup. I, I just think Toxic pairs well with everything. For as much as we drag it, yeah. Toxic instrumental really works as a mashup for mm-hmm. so many songs. It's like, that's constantly smashing on TikTok. Best dance recording, 2005. Not everybody has that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Also on TikTok, a quick shout out to one of my new fave accounts. Uh oh. It's at C N L A S T R O. It is someone who lives in Alaska. B I C T H. <laughs> yeah. And they post videos of the Northern Lights. Oh. And there's no music and it's very gorgeous. Okay. Mm-hmm. We'll have to look out for that. Good shout out. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think I have Artsy any. fartsy. Love a good TikTok that just takes you out of it. Oh my God. I was ready to pack up. Where were you going? Go to Alaska. Oh. It's like, get me the hell out of here. I want to go see the Northern Lights. I want to go to abroad to <laughs> yeah. Alaska. It's, no, it's not. It's connected. It's connected. <laughs> For we a second, can walk I was there. like, wait. Oh, <laughs> uh, well, before you leave, there, <laughs> <laughs> there is some other new music that dropped. Mm-hmm. Non TikTok related. First, we have Sigala. <gasps> Bop. Boppity bop bop. Their new track, Melody. Melody. Which... Not to be confused <laughs> yeah. with Melody Thornton. <laughs> but can be confused. And yeah. go ahead and look up Melody Thornton while you're at it. Mm-hmm. This is a great one. And it features, I forget who the songstress on it is. But yeah, sometimes we don't credit singers. Yeah, it wasn't credited, I don't yeah. think. There's a whole thing with that that I still don't fully understand about why you do or don't do that. Yeah. So, sometimes the songwriter doesn't want to be, so they they prefer to be like more behind the scenes. Unnamed Queen of Pop. Unnamed Queen of Pop. Yeah, Melody, check that out. What else do we have this week? We also have Grimes, Shinigami Eyes, which I've been waiting for for about a year since she teased it, doing her lightsaber dance in the pool. I really love Shinigami Eyes. This is a fucking bop. Yep. I'm a grime stan now, I think. Yeah. I'm really into her post billionaire techno trance era. Very into it. I have a question. Mm hmm. So their kid is named like the XCO Bobby 149. Yeah. Is it protected? Not is it. <laughs> son. Is the it baby is son. Yeah. actually named that? On oh, yeah. the birth certificate. On the birth certificate. Or is it just like a fake stage name? No, no, no. On the birth certificate. They had to actually change it to, I believe, X-E, X-A-E, X-I-I to make the 12. Like, in any case, like, they had to change the name to, like, make it work for the birth certificate. But it is real and insane. They call him X, though. Like, why not just put X then? I don't get it. I don't. I... I don't. There I, was choices. There were choices made, and I love the music. I she she's a controversial, polarizing figure, but this is I, a bop. This is a bop, and so is Player of Games. And I'm extremely looking forward to Book One, which is the album that's coming. But ahead of that is um, an EP, which has an iconic name. Shinigami Eyes is part of an upcoming EP called Fairies Come First, and come is spelled (laughs) C-U-M. Inappropriate. Inappropriate for the workplace. And yeah, just really loving it. Also a music video featuring Jenny of Blackpink, futuristic metaverse techno queen. Yeah, I'm really loving all the visuals. This is based on a concept in a very popular series called Death Note. And Shinigami are like death gods in the series. Actually, shout out Randall. He was the one who told me to watch Death Note. And it is good. Hmm. Shout out to our moderator. Shout out to our mod. 
Um, yeah. <clears throat> so, also the cover, because she has these glaring red eyes. Shinigami eyes. It's Lindsay Hubbard <laughs> in the season premiere of Summer House this season. If you watched, you know you know. But they're at dinner, and Carl pisses off Lindsay. She's like, you don't want to see me activated. Uh, and then they <laughs> literally, like, still Lindsay, and they put this exact thing, like, with the red eyes gleaming. Because she's sitting at the corner of the table and, like, flips out. And it's just like, and her eyes just light up red. Oh, my God. <laughs> I was like, oh, my God. Grimes. <laughs> Lindsay Hubbard's impact. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the Grimes cover. If you know, you know. We're going to have to do an edit of the cover and put in Lindsay Hubbard. It's like literally the same exact effect. That is so funny. I love that. Season's so good too. Oh my God. (laughs) Summer house stand here. Definitely. When are you going to make a sandwich for me? (laughs) Uh, Anyway. Anyway. There's a guy on actually who's really hot. I think you would. Yeah. Like, oh, my type. Yeah. He's straight, but Mm. yeah. Well, but he's on Summer House. I'm sure he's not. Yeah. In the premiere, he talked about how he'd eat like 10 pounds of lean turkey because he has so much muscles. So I was like, okay. <laughs> and they're all like, um, all right. <laughs> but he's hot. Well, I'll have to look that one up. Mm-hmm. Well, speaking of hot people. Okay. Yeah, that's the segue. Um, Tove Lo is back with a new song called How High Bop. as featured in the Euphoria soundtrack. Now, do you watch Euphoria? I do not. Everyone is telling me that I need to. Mm. Everyone's bullying me into watching Euphoria. Yeah. And just like that. Yeah. What was the other one people were telling me to watch? Um, That might be it. Antique Roadshow. (laughs) That is a good show. I watch it on TikTok now. They clip out the- Legally? Yeah. They clip out appraisals on their official channel. (laughs) And I'm like, let me find out how much these Magic the Gathering cards are worth. Wild Saturday night. (laughs) I'm there eating my lean turkey, watching an appraisal of an ancient urn. It's a wild Saturday night for me. Do they auction stuff off? They don't do the auctions. They always just say what it would get at auction. And it's usually just some older man or woman being like, huh. (laughs) (sighs) that's a very good question (laughs) i've been uh this was hanging up in front of my oven collecting soot and it's a picasso worth five thousand three dollars yeah (laughs) that's the best is when they are like thinking that it's worth thousands they've taken such good care of it and they're like three dollars they're like what i know we used to go to auctions when i was a kid no way yeah for things like like that every single week what? Yeah. This is we a, used to go to auctions. We used to go to like estate um, sales. Collingswood, like all the um I don't know what the fuck it's called, but it's like flea markets. No way. Oh would you yeah. bid? I wouldn't. I was a kid. I'd sit there. That's a child. And they literally <laughs> like <laughs> carrying a that's paddle. A child. <laughs> that's an ugly fucking box. <laughs> but they would all sit there with their little fucking paddles. Yeah. And be like, five dollars. And then some Susie would be like yeah. six fifty. And then they'd literally battle it out. Oh, shit. And I would just sit there and be like, okay. <laughs> it was like a thrill. That's so cool. And there was like racing cars. Like there would be these like things on tracks. Mm-hmm. It was a fucking wild time back in the 90s. Let me tell you. <laughs> it definitely was. Yeah. Yeah. I WWF, auctions. <laughs> like that's my childhood. I love that. Mm-hmm. Wow. Sitting in the Toyota Corolla. <laughs> Have it a sig. <laughs> <Not H-A-N. me. laughs> what a visual. Yeah. It's like a Chucky doll. Chucky sitting. dolls. <laughs> oh my God, that's funny. Photoshop incoming. Yeah. <laughs> T Kyle's childhood. By the way, everyone's started sending me Chucky memes now all the time. It's and a self fulfilling prophecy. You've you've done it to yeah. yourself. Did I send you did I show you the one of him being choked? <laughs> oh, speaking of your grinder dates. <laughs> yeah, literally. It's so funny. Look at this. <laughs> it's so funny. It's literally the one story of you that I won't go into detail. Oh yeah. <laughs> I should post this and be like me and who? <laughs> uh, Who's this one? Me one day into the WWF. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I know the gasification of oh, Chucky. My God. Oh, this so one. So good. <laughs> Can't honestly. The more you show, the more I'm like that. Truly, is oh, you? Jesus, awful. Mm-mm. 
Uh, so no euphoria for you no i've not watched euphoria either i don't really want to see high school kids in general yeah they they intimidate me and these are all like they're dressed really hot and they do a lot of drugs and they i'm just i i I don't want to i don't need that in my life i live a simple life of antique roadshow (laughs) and lean turkey i don't i don't need it i'll check it out though yeah maybe i'll check it out it's on hbo max right hbo yeah okay do you know those are still separate things? No, I did not know HBO that. HBO and HBO Max. Wow. Capitalism. Mm, capitalism won. Oh, there's no ethical consumption of Zendaya content in no. late stage capitalism. Nothing. Mm-mm. Oh, there's all that um, Spotify drama too. Oh my, the Spotify drama. Did we even want to talk about that? Well, there's not tons to say except the second that Heidi Montag pulls Superficial is the second oh, we revolt. Yep. So far, yes, Neil Young, Joni Mitchell, she never lies. Was it true about Countess Luann? No, that was oh, just another I a that. Yolanda Fister exclude. All of you with your fake fucking tweets. I literally thought that was real. I was like, really? <laughs> Luann? <laughs> I can't. The shit that I've seen, you only get 100 str- no. <laughs> no, she didn't. It's there. It's oh my God, Chic Say La Vie has almost a million streams. Oh, let me add to it. Yeah. Wait. Okay, um, just went to Countess Luann's Spotify to check and see if that screenshot was real or not. There is a new single called F-Bombs on the G with the OGs. Yeah. What? I heard about that. What? I remember that passed by. Oh, yeah. I missed this. And the girlies are on it. Well, who? The other- They're not, they're not featured. I... <laughs> well, they didn't pay for that. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on, hold on. Hold on. It's a rap single that she dropped in December. I can't yeah, we it slid through the uh the cracks of the the zeitgeist, but Oh wait, was this the one that was on Girls Trip? Yes. Yeah, okay. I feel like I heard people talking about a single, but it was on Peacock, so I couldn't watch. Oh, yeah. So I was like, I'll wait till this gets put on Yeah, inspired by uh her experience on the Real Housewives Ultimate Girls Trip. And maybe I lied about it there being features. I just thought I guess she was talking to some of the girls, but I, we'll have to listen to it. Kelly, the jelly beans. <laughs> <laughs> There's a music video too. What? Oh, yeah. Oh, it's rich. Oh, wait, it's mostly. I literally didn't even see this. <laughs> How did this fly off my radar? How, I, that is insane to me. Because I see everything that Yolanda Fister updates us on. You know. <laughs> <laughs> listen, if Luann can put out new singles. That should give you all the confidence in the world. I'm looking to see how many streams it's received, and I don't have a number here because I think it's too low. Oh. Yeah, I don't think it's even available to see. Because didn't they start showing how many streams everything has now? Yeah, My Spotify app is glitching. (laughs) They must be taking down someone else's albums. Yeah. Oh, performed by Countess Luann, written by Luann de Lesseps. Oh. No production credit because the person's too ashamed. (laughs) So it could be be. you. The art is also art. Yeah. The art is arting. Wow. Mm. What do Mm. I want for Christmas? (laughs) Just you and you. (laughs) Literally just stole the melody of all I want for Christmas is you and slowed it down. (laughs) Anyway. Viva la diva. How did we even get to Countess Luann? Oh, I was checking to see if that... Yolanda Fister tweet was fake or she real. She got you again, gal. Yolanda Fister, fake news. Fake news, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm kidding. We stand. We do every week. But that literally flew under my radar. Oh, well. Now you know. Anyway. Anyway. Um. Oh, yeah. Spotify. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well. Oh, Benet oh, Brown just announced pulling her podcast. Oh, Prince Harry and Meghan Markle said they've previously expressed concern about they sing? it. Yeah, they sing a podcast. Oh. They, they do a multi-million dollar deal with pod, with Spotify. And Where's that, our multi-million where, million dollar yeah, deal? Where is it? Cough it up. So far, Spotify just, did you see what they announced today? No, I clearly, I'm, uh, I'm two months behind on the are. Countess Luann single, so. They're trying to smooth this over by adding a advisory notice on all podcast episodes that deal with coronavirus with a little, basically the same thing on Instagram Instagram. story where it's like, for more information about COVID, click here. 
And it's like, all right, is that it? I mean, it's a big, messy situation. I don't oh, yeah. know how you handle it. I don't know how... Well, I mean, you could just let that schmuck go, but he brings in so much money for them, I'm sure. Yeah. Well, <sighs> I think it's also... It kind of reminds me of the Cardi B case that just... That she won? Yeah. Mm. Where this person was on the internet spreading lies. Yep. Knowingly spreading lies. Lies and, and rumors. Mm-hmm. Boom. Now you have to... She got clocked. Yeah. Yeah. Now you have to pay up for... Mm-hmm. What was it? Not... Uh, what's the word? It starts with a libel. L. Yes. Libel. Yeah. Well... It's like... Yeah. I would be a hypocrite to be like someone, you know, deplatform someone because like I have a podcast... But, well, we definitely need an advisory on ours. It's just like <laughs> I don't spread two lies. Fun fashion yeah. friends. Fair warning. When I say that Heidi Montag is the queen of pop. That is a scientific fact. <laughs> this statement might be <laughs> is not verified by scientists. But no, it does piss me off that people are allowed to have platforms and not specify mm. opinion versus fact. I think it's such a huge problem. Mm. Anyway, yeah. Luckily, like, I don't we like only you. do. I don't a... have to listen to you. Yeah, but like. When we make it expressly clear, this is facts only. Like when I posted that meme of Joe Biden listening to Gimme More, I got my fucking account flagged. I got flagged for misleading information. I got this report that said if I did it again, I was going to get my Twitter deleted. Yeah. And I'm fucking irrelevant compared to these people. Mm, You're saying the truth. And all the people that I know who've gotten banned and their accounts have been deleted for memes, Mm -hmm. but someone else is allowed to go and spread misinformation and Mm -hmm. get $60 million a year. $60 million are you kidding me? Mm-mm. And there's no like rule, like have your opinion, whatever. That's fine. Everyone's should be allowed to have their opinion. But mm-hmm. like, does that make sense? Doesn't make any sense, does it? Like you should have to say like, this is my opinion. This is not scientific fact. This has been proven wrong. Yeah. So that's what they're trying to do right now is they're adding a little advisory alert, which I don't know if that's no. going to be enough for people. I don't think so. No. The only thing it does is mess up my Instagram stories when I'm trying to make a funny Ava Max joke. Yeah. And it's like, this has not been verified by scientists. Oh, I love when it always picks up the wrong thing. It's always the wrong fucking thing. I'm like, I'm trying (laughs) to promote the motto. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Allegedly. (laughs) Allegedly. Allegedly one of my favorite songs of all time. Yeah. Not scientifically proven, (laughs) but... (laughs) But in it, my opinion, but it is the a motto fact. is a bop. It is a fact she's going to be on the next episode of Drag Race in an orange lopsided wig. Really? L- literally, she's the guest judge. <gasps> oh my god, they're going to lip sync Ava Max. Night of a Thousand Avas plus lip sync to the motto. I mean, some would argue that the wig is more iconic than anything JLo's ever done. Uh, this fact, Allegedly. this opinion has not been verified by scientists. <laughs> no. Um, <laughs> this, this, you know some this Stan opinion will get us that. dragged by yeah. Stan Twitter. Yeah. Well, that should be a good disclaimer. Yeah. <laughs> this statement this podcast... may get you canceled again on Stan Twitter. <laughs> I feel like at this point everything is just a fucking joke. So it's like, who? Uh, well, that's for sure. And I'm not laughing, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> I am. Oh God, what else? We haven't even got through the rest wow. of the song. Wait, is Ava Max actually on Drag Race? Next she week? literally is. is. Fake too. No, she literally is. <laughs> oh, okay, she's in an orange wig. Because I didn't see the the preview. preview. Next no, for... she literally is. Also, sometimes they do that. Sometimes they don't, and it annoys me. The preview. Yeah. Mm, maybe your stream is off. Probably. Yeah. <laughs> no, the preview's there. We're ready for it. What do we think the lip sync will be? I actually think they'll probably go basic and do kings and queens because oh. queens mm-hmm. that's my first thought if not then sweep a psycho bop i don't think they're going to take a riskier obviously a riskier decision would be like torn or naked or you know oh god there's just so many to choose from but and my head my heart wasn't out yet right Ooh, it might have because that came out last year it did oh but they were god. filming in when like may april who knows? Yeah. Oh, I don't know if it came out in time, but that would obviously be a great one. But I feel like they're just going to go a Stone Cold classic, a Max classic. All the kings. Queen of the Bop. Yeah. And we'll see how, how, you know, how good she is on the show. I'm sure she'll be flawless. Anyway, what else happened this week? <gasps> Ava Maxi challenge. <gasps> if they don't say it next week, Rue. Boycott. Rue, get your shit together. Yeah. <laughs> They have to say that next week. We'll Ava see. Frax. <laughs> oh, no. 
no! Oh my god! <laughs> too real. Too real. <laughs> oh my god! Not Ava Frax. I can't. Now somebody's gonna Photoshop her head on like a fracking <laughs> machine. <laughs> That's what. The... Oh no, we've gone too far. Wow. Um, quick shout out. Okay, clap tone. This is a a song called Queen of Ice, remixed by the legendary Pet Shop Boys. I'm just giving a quick shout out there. I'm gonna add it to this Legends Only Weekly. Bop bop bop. Mm-hmm. So good. And yes, check out the Legends Only Weekly mm. for every bop mentioned mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. here on the show. Facts and opinions yes. mentioned here. <laughs> um. All right. Let's talk about the F word of the week, probably. Mm-hmm. Bop. Bop 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 bop. Miss Charlie XCX and Miss Rina Sawayama united for the first time in song on Beg For You, a interpolation of September's 2006-2007 Super Smash. Iconic. Cry For You. You'll never see me again, but we did. Mm -hmm. Many times over the years. It became a meme. I think we've even discussed the meme in like two years ago. The music video lives on. It endures. Swedish Queen of Pop. Uh, but yeah, Beg For You is basically the semi-sad version of Cry For You. Yeah. Because Cry For You is like, you'll never see me again. Mm-hmm. Now I'm going to cry for you. And Beg For You is like very pathetically like, don't make me beg for you. Like, can I have another hour? Which It's very gay. Canonically is queer. Yes. To be pathetically begging for <laughs> someone's attention who doesn't want you. <laughs> tea. they knew their audience they did yes you know i enjoy it i don't know that it's it's not better than the original no and that's the thing about the original is it doesn't need to be remixed yeah. it is just so fucking iconic it does sort of just make me want to listen to the original mm-hmm. i do love that they referenced it and i love I don't know exactly where she stands with Atlantic records and if this is satire in any way or what, but she immediately did an interview and she said, well, you know, I'm a female artist on Atlantic records. So I figured it'd be appropriate to do an interpolation song since that's what you have to do. Oh, which, you know, who else did an interpolation song that smashed the charts? Who? Ava Max, Atlantic records, my head in my heart. That's oh, Bob. ATC. Yeah. And I'm like, well, Miss Charlie, I hope it smashes like Miss Ava does. I don't know exactly where she stands because, like, do you want to be the main pop girl and, like, lean in? Or are you being sarcastic the whole time and you hate this? Or what? I don't know. I don't think she wants to be main pop girl. I think she likes being a little Mm. bit of an underdog Mm. and having that niche, yeah, queer... Was that problematic? No. She's she's very much, like... (laughs) Allegedly. Her at... (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> no, her and Rena are like uh, queer saviors for sure. Yeah, I think she likes having a more... Because the thing is about her, there's a lot of people I know who are anti-pop yeah. who love Charlie. Oh, yeah. That's her thing. And I'm like, wait, what? Oh, yeah. And I think she likes that. Like that for underground sure. kind of like, I don't want to be... But I think she has that thing in the back of her mind like where she's like, damn, I'm making all these hits for other people. Like, I could be that girl, too, yeah. if I wanted to. I don't know. I do think it's uh, I th- it's fascinating in general because every press release I get from this campaign calls this her fifth and final album with Atlantic Records, which is, like, a weird thing to put in the press release from Atlantic Records. Like, who's happy You'll about You'll never that? see me again. <laughs> she literally said it. She did. <laughs> and, Yeah. Well, it's been an interesting time for Charlie's crash campaign. Good ones. Beg for you. Bop. I mean, they're ringtones, but they're great. Yeah. Yeah. I will say what I love about this is it's slightly different. Yeah. I may or may not have pulled it into Logic Pro. Oh, she's To she's compare starting. it she's to starting. Cry For You. Uh-huh. I just, I love how they changed up the notes slight. It's so It's cool. more melancholy. Yes. Yeah. They changed it very subtly, and I just love the instrumental of it. Yeah. But I, it is way too short. It's way too short. Actually, I'm going to complain about all the songs this week. Yeah. Everything is under two and a half minutes. Everyone should be in jail. <laughs> <laughs> Allegedly. 
because I was listening to it and I had to keep hitting rewind. Mm -hmm. I'm like, oh, it's over already. Mm -hmm. I don't want to go to the next song. Mm -hmm. I want to, can we just add another minute? Where's the bridge? Where's the bridge? Where's the final explosive chorus? We just, we're not asking for a lot. You could just copy and paste the chunk from the first segment if you want. And then add a little extra. They could change the lyrics to, I want to see you again. Oh. Goes along with Beg Free. Oh, she's a writer. Oh, she, Look at this. We, she's a producer she's now. Got a songwriter credit. Uh, I agree with you. I think this was a little bit too short. And you know what was especially short? I don't have it on here. I don't know if you've listened. The Anita song. Oh, I did listen to it. Fucking Bob. Bob. It's two like, minutes. Two minutes It's long. like two minutes and 15 seconds. That's insane. But also like. Who's shorter? They need a song or you? <laughs> <laughs> But literally everything that came out this week is like two fucking minutes. It's getting scary. It's becoming crazy frog ringtone. All Ooh, of it. Kind of a bop. Oh, a bop. Absolutely. Rita Ora knew what to do with that one. Oh, um, she did. But you know what? It is like I go back and forth with I get that you want it for TikTok and I get that you want it for streaming, but we will still listen if it's a little longer. I feel like they have no faith in the listener's attention span. Like no. just just, you know, a, a solid 3, 3.30 is fine. You know, every Eurovision song is See, and I have an under. idea here, and I don't want to give it because I feel like, Uh-oh. you know, I know Spotify is in hot water. Give this idea to Apple and Tidal. No, I don't like Apple Music. I'm sorry. I oh, think the okay. UI is terrible. Well, sorry. You know, the I UI, said it allegedly. The UI, in, my, in my personal opinion, the UI and UX is not good. Objectively, as a fact, <laughs> the <laughs> Apple Music UX sucks. I just think they're... That stands for user experience. Yeah, the experience in <laughs> Vegas. Experience. But also, yeah, it's just the drag and drop utility of Spotify and the, the ability to like find songs, add things. It's so much easier on Spotify than it is on Apple Music. We hate them all. <laughs> Where's our $60 million Where's contract? Our... <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. We don't need to do Spotify <laughs> promo. I will say also title slaps. Title's pretty good. It... Yeah. She also, she does kind the of quality slay. does kind of slay. She does slay a little bit. We have her for DJ streaming purposes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Here's what I think they need to do. Yeah. Put the two minute song on the playlist, <laughs> yeah. right? Like on Mint. I love Mint. Uh huh. That one's good for like, you know, you get a little moment, but then put the fucking single version. Yeah. Call it extended if you must. Yeah. So that I can add that one to my playlist that I listen to. That's a brilliant video games. It's a working. brilliant idea. Call it radio edit. Call it extended version. Just like we've always yeah, done. Streaming edit. Well, streaming edit. Radio edit. Pride oh my God, version. Edit. Yeah. Phantom By demand. version. Yeah. Honestly, if you can't just fucking do that bridge and final chorus as the extended version, come on, come on. Because the bridges are always so good. Like that's the best part of a song. God, I know. And this is a good one. Uh, Boys Don't Cry, Anita. This is like her, not her first by any means, but like this is an English language song where I'm like, oh shit, she's like snapping as a main pop girl. And I think this could be like a moment. And she worked with the legendary Rami who did Baby One More Time for it. She's snapping with all these big names and everything. But it's two minutes. Yeah, they're so It also short. reminds me of Bonnie McKee. Ooh. And the video because she's uh, surrounded by like zombies. It reminds me of Sleepwalker underrated bonnie mckee mm -hmm. god anywho american girl yeah brazilian girl material girl <laughs> material girl oh tiktok talk rewind oh okay the tiktoks Saucy of Santana. people saying like me sitting at dinner trying not to say material girl <laughs> or like the bill per like and they're just tweaking out like that's another trend that that is yeah mm -hmm. material Delusional girl <laughs> Still sends me to material girl has people in a chokehold. It really does. Saucy Santana is cashing fat checks right now mm -hmm. for sure. I, hope I hear it. Like when I yeah. see certain things, yeah. I'm just like material girl. Yeah. Though like in the silence I was at, I was seeing scream in the movies and it was like dead silence. I'm like material girl. <laughs> He's going to kill you girl. He's gonna kill you, girl. <laughs> Don't answer Behind the phone you, girl. girl. <laughs> Oh, oh, that's really good. <gasps> Look behind you, girl. <laughs> Got the kitchen knife. The kitchen knife, ghost face. <laughs> uh, we'll work on that. Too real. Yeah. Nev, record it. Um, oh my God, know what I just noticed? Did you notice if you swipe, speaking of UX, if you yeah. swipe like that, it shows who edited it and when they did it? I noticed by accident um, recently. Oh. 
Yeah. Wow. New feature. New new feature. Maybe Apple did something. <laughs> They're watching. They are watching. Anyway. Okay. Anyway. <laughs> well, now it's time for the main, main event. The yes. main course. The two-day event. The Legends. Lifetime A&E. Four hours. Janet. The documentary. Now, you watched it. Mm-hmm. We all, the girls in the Discord watched it. There was a tweet along. There was a Discord along. There was a spaces chat. There was a lot. Yeah. There was a lot. And it was good. I have my issues with it, as I knew I would. But I think it was a good documentary. I knew going into it as like a nerd for the music that it wasn't going to cover it the way I wanted it to. Cause mm-hmm. you just can't like not in two nights. And I was actually surprised that it was largely personal life. Like it wasn't all, but it was very relationships, uh, media drama, scandals and controversies, family dynamics, um, which is all, you know, we don't get a lot of insight to notoriously, famous, private, scandalous family. So that was all very fascinating. But, you know, the selfish part of me was like, what about when you wrote Together Again? There are there are some career moments that I was shocked that they didn't go into, including Together Again, actually, because that was such like a, she wrote, you know, the memory of a friend who died of AIDS. I was actually shocked that that didn't get a moment um, about like more about the queer community stuff on that angle of it. There were things about the music that I felt like it started from control through Janet pretty well, but then it kind of just gave the other albums like a headline of like, it went number one, Mm -hmm. where I was like, oh, wait a minute. I would like you to talk about the Velvet Rope for a week, please. So I have mixed thoughts about that. But I thought what she did provide with insights into her life was really fascinating and very appreciative of what she did have to say. What did you think? Well, as the lesser Stan of the two. You just say lesser. No. <laughs> well, I don't say that in like a negative way. No, no. I, you just, I, okay, so, okay, to set the context, I really only knew the music, yeah. starting with Together Again, All For You. Mm. When I was watching TRL, yeah. that era of like Janet, I was like, the icon of pop. special. Yes, like I only saw the music videos. Mm. I had no idea about any of the drama really i didn't know about the secret Bobby rumors mm. and also i didn't admittedly i was kind of ignorant to how she started her career i didn't realize how young she was when she started so that yeah. first episode of the mm-hmm. four i was shocked i had no idea about the vegas residency and how they started her out so young, like yeah. literally younger than any of the other girls yeah. that we stand. Yeah. I was like, holy shit. Mm-hmm. And I had no idea the story about her father and how he managed her and the history behind control. And so mm. for me as someone who admittedly like, okay, don't crucify me, Janet stands, but like for someone who had no idea, yeah, this no. whole thing was super enlightening. And I was like, holy fuck. And I think that was the point of it. Yeah. I think it was very much like, this is my story, high-ish level. It was yeah. comprehensive, but it's still, you In know. the way that the Britney docs, I felt like, mm. for me watching them, I'm like, none of this is new for me. Yes, exactly. I'm like, okay, I know this, blah, blah, blah. But friends mm. of mine who aren't like us, yeah. for them, it was like super eye-opening. I feel like- I think, yeah. I think in the same way that people were like, mad at Justin Timberlake after they watched the Britney documentaries and we were like, what are you talking yeah, where about? Have you been for the past like 20 every years? time, like what yeah. cry me a river. Like that whole story was rehashed for a whole new generation of people where yeah. we were like, yeah, duh. And I think Janet's story, because obviously it is even longer. There are so many parts of it that probably people either don't know or don't remember. Yeah, so me. it's like rehashing <laughs> a lot of these things. So maybe yeah, Jan fam, not so new, but like, I think ultimately this served as her public, statement mm-hmm. about every allegation and her stance on her family and her life. I think this was the ultimate like here's where I ha- what I have to say. This is my statement on every one of these issues that you've brought up. I am retiring. Thank you. Like I think it tied it She's all in the door. Yes, I think it was very much addressing everything. She said what she had to say about Michael. 
She said what she had to say about the Super Bowl. Now, let's talk about the clip that she put in in 2022 Mm -hmm. where she was just like, hey, everyone, Justin and I are friends, so... (laughs) She's like, and yes, I saw the shady post. (laughs) And yes, it's really bad for him. It's really bad. And yes, I did see the shady post. Um, (laughs) I think she's just... Regardless of how she truly feels about it, I think she's at a point in her life where she doesn't want to dwell in it any longer. She, she might need to. She might feel still a certain way about Justin, but I think she's like, I don't want this to be a thing that gets regurgitated every year and it's like a constant reminder. She doesn't want it to define Yeah, because to a certain point, it's like, yeah, you don't want your career to be like sort of defined by like, oh, this tragic thing that she got you know, blacklisted from radio and all of that stuff. It's like, no, 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 let's celebrate her. And albums came out past that. And I don't want this to be like the defining thing. I totally get that. Yeah. So I think there was that. And I think by closing the door on that, Mm. it actually tees up for in the future, like you saying, going more into the music. I think this sets her up to be able to do that. Like now she doesn't have to address any of the scandals anymore. Good point. She could do like a 20 years of Janet where she's like, I'm going to go through every single album deeper. And yeah. She's now shut the door on the quote unquote like drama and gossip stuff. Yeah, I would like that. Yeah, my ultimate take because her music videos do need to be put back on YouTube in HD. She needs to do like a whole legendary. Yeah, there were some issues I had with the ending as well, which was very legendary with everybody. But then it queued up something that doesn't exist. It said Black Diamonds coming, N- new tour, new oh, that new wig scene gave me like- PTSD. Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah. the whole thing was just like, here's something, and it's I'm going out with a bang, and nothing. And I was like, why even include it? If you knew that this was going to lead to anything, that's crazy to me. Yeah. To, I mean, this is the perfect vehicle to launch a single A pre-save EP, link. A pre-save link. Just wild to me that they kept that in there, knowing that like, there's nothing here right now. That's That was shocking to me. But I still think it ultimately garnered a lot of goodwill for her there's a lot of reconsideration of her music her career all the things that she's been through it gave a lot of context for me to a lot of the songs much in the way that the mariah Mm. book Mm -hmm. gave me all this context for all these songs that i'd been listening to for years Mm -hmm. this i was like oh yeah i wanted it to do even more because there's so so much richness to the discography like reflecting on her life and things like that that she could totally do a memoir just about the music or a 20 part Netflix series about the music. Um, Cause I would like that. I would also like it to explore more the being the blueprint thing, which they did say a few times, but Oh wow. Like as you know, watching her like Hawaii special or so many of the tours and stuff. It's so many of our faves is because of her. Yeah, they said it at the end, actually, they were, you know, Beyonce, Britney, Ciara, Tanache, these are all her daughters and, and granddaughters, like, these are all, and it's not to say that they're copies, but it's no. like, they inspired, she inspired, und- undoubtedly, like, I remember in Britney, Breathe On Me, every single tour, oh. getting those lap dances, I was like, she got that from Janet, holy yeah. shit, like, yeah. literally, the chair. <laughs> yeah, the configuration it's shocking to watch some of her shows like that is yeah Brittany was deeply inspired but she also said it and for the record remember she was like i want the dancers like close together like in janet's last tour uh-huh. like the blueprint like in so many ways just visually sonically uh leading the girls and so i feel like there still needs to be like more justice for janet not so much about the we we get it the super bowl we get it like Boys music video. Boys music vibe is literally all for you. Yeah, anticipating Look. is Janet. Mm-hmm. I just, yeah, I think there could be more said about um, the visuals, the the tours and stuff, and why truly all of the girls look so much like her and owe so much to her. But the problem, and I'll disagree with her at the end. She was like, you know, artists when they have documentaries about it, it's like people you know, making their best assessments of the artist's life, but it's not them themselves. And I agree about that on the personal side, and I'm glad she got to have her say on the personal side. But artistically, I don't think you really know 
especially when you're a humble legend like Janet, like what your music did. I don't know if you have the full awareness because you're in that artist bubble of like the ripples of what it caused. Cause you're also not trying to like stand yourself. Yeah. So I think it takes like a stand documentary team to like truly traverse through the eras and talk about it and get her insight along the way. That would be awesome. But like somebody from the outside needs to document the music because I think she doesn't give herself enough credit. No, even through all of this. And it was a very praising documentary of the music. I still think, it's scratched the sur- surface of like the legendary streak of records. And there was so much that I still wanted to hear more about. I think my favorite highlights actually were her fight with Jimmy Jam in the studio, which was really raw and tense mm-hmm. because one of the things that you just sort of take for granted is like, okay, she's worked with this legendary duo throughout basically her whole career, more or less. And you just think it's all, you know, fine and dandy. It's cool to see them have that creative disagreement, knowing that they fight like siblings sort of and come back to each other. And yeah. It wasn't like, you know, anything abusive, but it's like, oh yeah, this is the creative process. This is butting heads and pushing her to be better in the studio and whatever. That was really fascinating. And her writing Scream with Michael was crazy to see happening in yeah. real time. Also in contrast to what they showed earlier, mm. when she was talking about in the beginning, how they just, she showed up and just sang what she was supposed to. Yeah, yeah. And then when it switched to control, I didn't even realize how much bigger that was of a meaning. Oh yeah. And then showing that she's speaking up for herself. She, yeah. That's why when I remember when Brittany posted in front of the red screen in 2019, I, I think I said on the podcast, whichever podcast Brittany one or this one, like, I would love her to do a top to bottom cover of the Control album because it's so meaningful and certainly it has an added layer of meaning for Britney now. And Control was like truly about taking control. And so I think it's super meaningful. Yeah, that's like a defining album for her, of course. Yeah, there's even more to go through that whole era and past the albums of the Super Bowl era, like We really, she didn't really touch All Night Don't Stop. Oh, Bob. Like, nothing on discipline, really. I feel there's more to be told in those realms. But what are you going to really expect from somebody who makes their own documentary? It wasn't going to be that, I don't think. Right, they're not going to be like, I'm an icon. Right. Yeah. Right, especially her, who is, like, humble to a fault. Yeah. Like, it's like, okay, and again, like her daughter, Brittany, it's like, Queen, please see that you are a legend, Mike, for the love of God. It's like you're you're too kind. Is it also just me or for thinking this, but like some of Britney's mannerisms? Oh, I Okay. It's in the Janet. way that she talks, the I'm way like, she that talks. is Janet. Yes. I was thinking that too during the segment. Even their eyes are very like they Yes. Have... During the segment when Janet was talking about getting sexier, mm-hmm. it was extremely Britney talking about her own evolution from yeah. Yes. I really saw it after yeah. this. Like you had told me to She's keep Janet's an eye on it. She's uh, daughter, to look at yeah. Janet instead of Madonna. Right, right, right. This, I was like, what? the whole time, I was thinking it the entire time. Yeah. If you watch a full Janet concert special, it's especially like ones that air like right before Britney's, like it is truly shocking. It's, she owes everything to Janet. And I'm not saying it's not, you know, it uh, anything to her talent. I'm just saying no. she was so, so inspired by Janet. So, yeah. And it started from the beginning. I remember Britney did like the Legends medley, that grainy footage of Baby Tour um, or whatever, where she did like, I think, Black Cat and Nasty. Yeah, she's always been inspired. And it's not just Britney. It's so many of the girls. Like, I think Beyonce's social commentary probably stems all the way back to Rhythm Nation. Like, all of that was heavily inspiring. That was really eye-opening for me, too. Mm -hmm. I didn't ever connect the timeline yeah until seeing it in the documentary yeah yeah she's truly fucking legend um i loved the uh processional of legends in the series like missy mariah mariah had maybe my favorite moment she Uh stole the moment where they're talking about the legendary rolling stone cover and she's like well i wish i was allowed to do that yeah (laughs) literally (laughs) She literally, she didn't appear much in this, but she did no, appear. Like twice. To, she appeared to be like, I wish I could get my tits out. <laughs> it was literally. So, it was so good. But also, I feel like 
each of those interviews is its own special. <sighs> totally. Like hearing Mariah talk about Janet for an hour. Yeah. Missy talking about her for an hour. Whoopi. Whoopi was Samuel L. Jackson. Yeah, like it was everyone. Like, oh yeah, it also made me think, like, how long did you sit them for? And how much did they say that didn't make it? Yeah. Yeah. Also, shout out to Paula Abdul. Oh, my God. What a sweet moment. I had no idea that, like, did Paula help shape her choreography? Mm-hmm. And is, like, again, Paula Abdul Legend. does not get her flowers She either doesn't either. That's a really good point. For inspiring the girls. Yeah. I she... thought that moment when in the dance studio. Yeah. Because I always just knew Janet as being, like, a fucking iconic dancer. And mm-hmm. I thought it started from... The get go, like the beginning, the, yeah. but then seeing how it evolved mm-hmm. through Paula, like helping her come into her own, yeah. Oh my god, I really just loved seeing that. It was so heartwarming to see how emotional she kept getting just talking about Janet. Like she truly is so proud of their work together and proud of Janet, and that was really sweet. This is a place for legends, okay? Paula is like Paula is like such a sweet-hearted person. Mm-hmm. God, we stan. And yeah, legendary. Just some truly iconic choreo. But there were still so many things like like the if breakdown dance. Like there's so many things that I'm like, oh my God, we didn't even get to this part. Like we there's so many iconic Janet moments that it still didn't hit. Well, maybe someone needs to write the uh Yeah, I guess so. The script for the upcoming <laughs> Sell to Janet. Be like we're doing twenty years of Janet. Well, no, it's more, more like that. 30. Oh. Yeah, 80. Uh, oh, yeah, it's definitely 30 or 40. I know, and it does actually make me nervous for the Madonna biopic because I'm like, yeah, this can't be your entire career because you're going to skip so much. You have to do a little segment because you were, you were skipping too many valuable moments that were iconic. There's so many points, like just her like pivot to sexuality and the Rolling Stone cover, that was its own story right there like that was fascinating also shout out to her ex for videotaping her until it became overbearing which was unfortunate but we did get probably like 70 percent of this documentary from it yeah those home videos are invaluable they are crazy to see raw footage of writing scream with michael that's insane the laptop that laptop. Huge. Which probably was very expensive then. Yeah. Yeah. But that photo really is fucking legendary. Mm-hmm. The Rolling Stone. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I know. That that was um, break the internet before break the internet. Yeah. And then the Super Bowl thing was YouTube. Mm-hmm. Like how Google Images was th- from the dress. The dress, right. This was, I mean, it didn't invent YouTube, but like. Right. Everyone wanted to see it. It's also still so wild to me that that was so shocking and yeah. controversial. Like seeing the news footage of all like little Susie's being like, and yeah. then, oh my gosh, so disgusting. <laughs> I can't believe. Oh, shut the fuck up, Susie. You wish your tits looked like that. <laughs> also, like, it's so weird because I remember where I was when mm-hmm. that happened. I was sitting on my dad's little mini chair by the TV, like his TV watching chair, mm-hmm. like all like huddled up. Watched it happen. I was so gagged. And I was like, I want to be up there. I want to do that. I know. Well, surprise, surprise. Yeah. This is you between Sable and Janet's tits out. Literally. I I can't say I'm surprised. Gagged. Same. But it still happens. Like, it's still, the Super Bowl is this, like, ultimate God and guns, like, family-friendly shit. And it's like, I mean, things have died down significantly. But, like, it still feels extremely conservative like like sports in general the, except tennis we stand serena well, williams well yes it's just like it is insane that it was that much and i think that's really what a lot of this had to show for itself was like look how fucking crazy we acted look what you did to her look at all of that you're um, right though it still does happen oh yeah because they're women well yes of course australian open just the other day mm-hmm. the men that were playing the one guy was cussing out the mm-hmm. i forget what he's the referee Mm -hmm. no one said anything Hmm. but when serena did it everywhere i mean mia flipping off the camera during the madonna one iconic iconic and you're gonna tell me a man doing that would have caused the same outrage and and charging the the network all the money no never that would have been seen as an act of rock and roll which it is and nobody would have given it two thoughts it's because it was a woman It, it continues this shit continues but yeah so it is 
in the same way that the Britney docs are being sort of enlightening about how we treated women, this was Janet's own way of doing that. But it was still too humble. And that's just, that's her. Of, of, that's her. Of course it was going to be too humble. And that's why she's had the career that she's had. And that's mm-hmm. why she's a fucking legend. Yes, it is. I really enjoyed getting the rare insights we did from her. And, you know, she did say that she wants to retire after this. And rightfully so. It's been a long, hard journey for her. This meaning like the doc or this meaning whatever is next? Oh, her whole career. Like she's done. Like she's she says she wants to like go out with a bang. Well, what's the bang? I'm thinking maybe End of one the year. more residency or tour. I'm thinking Black Diamond if that does materialize. It's just a shame that they didn't have something locked and loaded for that moment. It's bizarre in my opinion. But I mean, I think in timing wise the fact that she doesn't have to do that much of a press tour mm. and will not have to talk about any of the gossip shit, mm-hmm. she can let that simmer down, then pick back up with the music. Yeah. And going into that, say, like, we're not discussing any of this. Yeah. Let's go watch my documentary. Bye. Right. Right. I'm sure that was the major urge of this whole thing was to be like, look, I want to just give my official statement and move on. Yeah. Because it just became louder and louder every year. The Justice for Janet on Super Bowl Sunday. And it's like, all right, let's just put a pin in it. Y'all acted crazy. It's so wild. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wouldn't that be a gag if she was doing the Super Bowl next week? I wish. Or two weeks from now. Yeah, I wish. Well, hey, maybe the feedback reference from this. Bob. Needs to be uh, remastered, put on YouTube. It does. Maybe it will cause them to go. If I was her, I'd get up there and I'd flash the other tip. <laughs> yes. Hell absolutely. yeah. And there ain't a damn thing you can <laughs> yeah, do about literally. it. <laughs> and this is live TV. <laughs> no, there's a seven Sable, second delay now, though. Sable and Melody Thornton rise up. Oh, my God. <laughs> and there's not a damn thing you can do about it, Nicole. <laughs> it's honestly that moment of Sable oh, shaped yeah. my worldview. I defining we got to clip it and put it on the instagram oh Just i have it on my phone yeah it's it a daily mantra gives me so much adrenaline mm-hmm. because it is such a fuck you a very moment. empowering moment yeah Ugh. love it but yeah and honestly i love your idea like fuck them she could do what she wants but how would you get around the seven second delay yeah yeah i she couldn't actually because they would once again hit her with that You'd have to make a reference to it. She could do a fun reference. Yeah. Yeah. She could do something that isn't actually. Ooh. Oh. Ooh. (gasps) There's so many things you could do with it. Yeah, there are. There are. There are. You could just. Oh. oh. There's so (laughs) many ideas. I literally like. You could start ripping things off. Reveal it. And it's just Les Moonves' face. (laughs) What was that? It's just the Wendy. (laughs) No, but like. Just with like a. Not not nude bodysuit, but like some kind of like a diamond and it just like, she slowly, it just like rips off piece by piece. Mm. And then it's like another, Ooh, like a Phoenix rising like a to full a full black diamond bodysuit. Yeah. Oh, could you just picture it? Oh, I could. With that high pony. Yes. And just a all black mm. diamond bodysuit. Oh, that would be good. And then that a silhouette. Oh, oh my God. Concept. Oh, she's how a do visual I, artist. How can I do this? I know. That would be great. It would be so good. And even though I, I just invoked his name and I don't want to keep riffing on this uh, incident, again, they, they boiled it down to a few headlines. They were just like, Janet blacklisted. But it's like, that is its own documentary. Yeah. And I know it's been explored, like the New York Times did it and uh, many articles. But it's like, yeah, there's so many of these parts of this that are like, the extent to which that she was like blacklisted and like, what that did to her career is its own story. So yeah. anyway, she's an enduring icon. She's overcome a lot of bullshit. It's uh, like that clip of Miss New York. And I'm here, bitch. Uh-huh. That's Can't basically. get rid of me this time. <laughs> you know that one? <laughs> I was just thinking of the Miley. You they tried to kill your famous your your famous bitch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there was some very sweet moments here i think she's just very enlightened right now she really is a very i did cry like twice i think there are moments where it's just like she's done a lot of work to come to a place of acceptance with things that are 
pretty bad and also her father she talks about him in a way that's very like I've come to understand that what he did for us through good times and bad brought me to where I am today and I am grateful for everything I've gone through and I wouldn't change anything that's a very wor- grown sort of mentality yeah to like come to and that the footage conclusion. of him at the concert oh yeah that was mm-hmm. yeah mm-hmm. yeah family fucking dynamics in pop music literally i mean that's obviously you can't avoid thinking about that the whole time back in it's true siblings and parents when fame and money are involved holy fuck mm-hmm. it's truly a tale of control and messy 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 i know the scene where she was talking about how finding friends was mm-hmm. impossible. Mm-hmm. She's like, I have no friends. Yeah. Oh my God, that was so hard. She was so young. Uh, yeah. But then I like, when I thought about it and I seen the footage of just, which we haven't seen footage like that with celebrities in a long time of like the swarms of people. Yeah. Like that. Just, it's like you forget that level of superstardom that someone has. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. It was wild. Yeah. Definitely during the allegation, the first allegation years, like seeing the way that Michael and, Jan- like the family had to like physically run and yeah. like the way it was so like charged and violent the crowds that was pretty shocking to see it just doesn't happen like that anymore no to that degree it's we can't crazy stand tale. outside the TRL studios anymore <laughs> no it's an aeropostal now <laughs> whatever the fuck it is <laughs> it's a red lobster yeah but I think it is actually yeah I dated somebody who worked there <laughs> it's just an ad <laughs> It's just a screen. It's a screen showing Yolanda Fister's tweets about girls' trip. <laughs> it's no yeah, longer a studio. Yeah. Now go get your uh, Cheddar Bay biscuits. <laughs> Red Lobster. I got my best biscuits there. <laughs> oh, cheddar Slay <laughs> biscuits. <laughs> Fuck. Well, all right. Concluding thoughts about the documentary. I'm happy it happened. I'm happy that we got some insights from Janet. I think it serves its purpose for being really good for um, the general public to know the overview of her career. Um, I don't Me know. being general public, <laughs> but like literally though. And I think it's um, a good reminder of everything she's gone through and how much of a fighter she is. And I'm pleased. It's always cool to see everybody talking about Janet because obviously what happens is like after this, everyone's like, Remember this iconic song or video or interview moment and like the timelines going crazy with like oh yeah Me everything that night. you didn't see. So that's a cool uh moment that spirals out from these things and yeah. I'm looking forward to to more content coming out and hopefully something from her. We do have Love I Love. Mm. That's coming or out or not it's not out but it is a It song. was in the credits it but was. then there was no link. That's what's killing me. It's like we couldn't even you promo the song, but it's not out. It's killing yeah. me. Killing me. Janet. Is it really? Let's check Spotify. Not sponsored. Don't yeah. come for us. <laughs> we do not endorse. Made for now. Yeah, no, it's, I don't think it's there. <sighs> nope. We'll just have to sign a petition to get it out there. Yeah, there's a lot of music here to discuss. All night. That music video too. That was another one. There's so much of it. Like, uh, there's an entire behind the music, you know, the MTV specials when they made making the video where there's so much detail and things like that. It's hard when you're a legend to tell your tale. Well, maybe she will do the Mariah method and re-release everything, get everything back up in HD. I would love that. Maybe we can have sort of a... Remix, remastered. Remix, remastered. Maybe she could do a little Spotify track by track and talk about them. That could be fun. Something, something that gets her insight into those songs. The the Velvet Rope especially is just so groundbreaking and fantastic. And I, I think I would love for people to like know more about that album. And It's like that video series of Christina Aguilera talking about Lotus. Exactly. <laughs> but like that. I wish, she, yeah. Maybe it was too ahead of its time for <laughs> certain people, but like literally that. Literally. Honestly, she was of singing time. about, yes. She was singing about cyber sex before it was like really even a thing then. Like that yeah, album. Yeah, before there was the internet. It, well, yeah, it was like right as the internet was breaking. It was just very. And, and depression and. Phonography all this stuff is. Here. Phonography. Honestly, phonography was probably inspired by that. I'm sure. Yeah. I mean, a ton of. Everyone's been doing emails. 
I think this kind of seals the deal on the whole Britney Madonna versus Janet like inspiration. Like at this point, everybody should understand it's like, no, she's Janet's daughter. Undeniably, like maybe she is Janet's secret Bobby <laughs> that she denied. Oh my, no, I'm oh my god, it all comes together. It first. These are opinions. A source not says facts. a scientist cannot confirm whether or not Britney Spears <laughs> is Janet's daughter at this time. Yeah. A DNA test is needed. All of those like news clips were so funny to me. Yeah. I'm like, a secret baby. <laughs> I'm just like, what? <laughs> yeah. Doesn't make any sense, does it? Yeah. I mean, it was an action packed weekend from the winter storm. She's an icon. She's a legend. T- and she Joe. is the moment. Um, Demita Joanne. Demita Joanne. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Everything's connected. Sure All of is. our legends. Yeah. It really is. It's never really over. Oh. Oh. She was on SNL. She sang. She sang. Did you watch? I don't know why I said it like that. I did not mean well, to say it. She sang that song on SNL was the sentence I meant to say. She <laughs> did. I just, I just stopped. <laughs> she did a ballad version of it. Yeah. That was... I didn't enjoy it. <laughs> the way you said that was good. It was honest. Sorry. You know, no. I... No, I I, I, I agree. I did not. Yeah, but she did wig when I'm gone. She did wig. Mm-hmm. And wow. she had, those mushrooms were turning it out. Yeah. Somebody was like the yassification of Toad. Oh, literally. <laughs> he was serving. The Toads were really serving. Um, wig was great live. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm into this like a uh, psychedelic trip mushroom fantasy that she, that's fun. Yeah, I like that. her. Yeah, totally. Just, you know, slowing down, never really over to be more serious and like guitar rock. Mm, yeah. No. Eh. Eh. Would not have been my selection. No. I mean, never really over original version would have sufficed. It's just she wanted to put a little spin on it. Yeah. I guess. And this is live TV. Is and there ain't a damn, damn thing, thing <laughs> Vince can do about this. <laughs> Lauren can do about oh, this. <laughs> Pulls down two mushrooms. <laughs> oh, <laughs> iconic. Uh, <laughs> oh, God. All right. Legendary. <laughs> she just does like all like unreleased from Witness. <laughs> <laughs> <I'm very interested. laughs> Roulette. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Well, what else we got? We got live chat coming in a oh, matter yeah. of hours when uh, yeah, you're I listening. Think. Yeah. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Maybe. <laughs> yeah. No, we, well, I don't know when I'm going to post oh, this. Yeah. But yeah, it's on Monday night. So if you missed it, sorry. But um, <laughs> if you're there, hey. It's never really over. Um, our Icon tier yeah. live chat. If you're in the Icon tier, we do a monthly live, live chat, chat where we chat live. live. And there ain't a damn thing Vince can do about that. Yep. You can oh, throw- by the way, I'm not related to Vince McMahon. That's a good thing to establish. I would just like to be very clear. Mm-hmm. I know I talk about the WWF. <laughs> I am not. I don't. <laughs> He's Talk about big, my last name. He's in I'm the pockets of WWF. Yeah, I'm. Uh, I'm trying to be like Mariah, where I erase my last name off the internet. Yeah, <laughs> after having my identity stolen. Yeah, true story. So uh, I'm not related. Thank you for clearing. So the just air clarifying on that. that this was the T. Kyle documentary series. Yeah, <laughs> your official <laughs> statement. <laughs> <laughs> um. Yeah. Live chat, and we'll be back with main episodes as usual. Pending any further winter storms yeah. or pop star documentaries. Mm-hmm. And uh, I guess until next time, we will see you soon. And there's not a damn thing you can do about <laughs> it. No. 